Hey you guys, it's good to see y'all, metaphorically speaking. So if you follow us on Instagram, you've probably seen we have been doing a ton of traveling lately. We've been, you know, a week in Florida, a week in California, Colorado, just all over the place, all good stuff. But we are so happy to be home and we can't help but notice in the time that we've been mostly gone, it is all of a sudden winter. I mean, yeah, evidently we've just skipped over fall and gone straight into winter mode, so that's interesting. So over the last couple weeks, just as we've been able to, as we've been home, we've been starting to do some of the things that winterize, that's kind of a strong word, but that, that make the house more comfortable for winter. It is indeed a house, it's not a boat, it's basically a tiny home on floats, so there's no like motor and hull and all of that, there's nothing to actually winterize in the way that you do with a boat, but there still are some things that we have to change in order to be comfortable and safe in the winter, so. What are you doing? So yeah, this week we're just gonna go over some of those things and show you guys what that looks like. We're going to show you how we move the house and adjust the mooring lines to accommodate for the lake level dropping as it gets colder. How we deal with the floors getting really cold all of a sudden as the water temperature drops. Some changes that we have to make with our hot water heater in the winter time. And a new source of heat that we are installing this week. So yeah, thanks for being here you guys. And without further ado, hope you uh, enjoy the video. Ooh, how's it going, baby? That time of year, huh? Yeah. We're switching back over. We have to add to this in the winter. So basically, we add this extra cable in the summer, right? When it's when the house the is further the out. Roof in the summer. Yeah. And I splice it into this cable. But you can't wrap the rope and the cable on this winch because there's not enough spool on the winch. So, in the winter time, we have to switch back over to just straight cable. Because as the lake drops, we scoot further out away from the bank. Also, we're getting lower, of course, and both of those things combined puts us closer to our anchor, which is somewhere out here under about 100, 150 feet of water. So, we need less cable. Now we're gonna let up our back lines. It's a constant give and take. One keeps us from hitting the bank. One keeps us from floating out in the middle of the lake. We might as well go ahead and get ready for winter pool. I think this will get us 65 feet down. You like it? We'll still have to adjust. Right. But that'll do it. Alright, baby. Oh. Hi. What are you doing? So it's our favorite time of year when we switch our hot water heater from summer to winter. And we're having to do that because it's freezing. It's really Which just that easy. It just makes it use more gas so it heats the water because the water is colder. We start noticing our shower is not quite as warm as we'd like it to be and we just flip that over to winter and it's good to go. Our water comes from a pipe that's in the lake, so when the lake cools down, our water gets colder and it takes more to heat it. We do not currently have any boats that require winterization. We've got outboards that we use. The dinghy's got an outboard as well. And this lake doesn't freeze 
at any point. So it's really pretty simple as far as the boats go. We just continue business as usual, but with gloves. Okay, so as far as heating our floors up goes, the water temperature drops a lot in the winter, mainly like after Christmas, but it's definitely already started. Um, it, it doesn't get much colder than mid fifties or so, but that's definitely cold enough to make the floors very chilly on your feet. Um, plus the cold wind that can blow through parts of the floats as well. So this time of year, it's time to activate our heated floor system. I'm just kidding. <laughs> We're not made of money. So what we do is just geniusly put a rug down and wear slippers. That's it. Simple as that. Riveting, I know. But yeah, so that's a common tiny home issue. You know, lots of people with tiny homes on wheels in particular have to put down extra layers to insulate the floor in the winter time as the wind is blowing underneath their house. So. Just one of those things that you adjust to, but super easy. Okay, and last but not least, our heating system. We have used this propane heater since we moved in here. It came with the house. It was one of the few things that was uh, actually salvageable. <laughs> and it is super old, probably not very efficient, but it works and it keeps the house nice and warm. So that's what we've been using. But some of you guys may recall in our videos last winter, we had a big issue with moisture in the house. Um, in the winter time, we don't usually have our windows and doors open, of course, and so as it turns out, propane creates a ton of water. And this was news to us. Maybe that's common knowledge, I don't know. But either way, we did not know. We actually found out because of some of y'all that commented and let us know that and had suggested a wood stove to dry out the air and help with our moisture issue. So that's what we did. We got a wood stove. Um, and this is probably the last day or two that we will use the propane stove because we've just gotten in all of the like piping parts here for the wood stove. I was really hoping to show you guys the install of this stove. It is the cutest thing ever, but we're not gonna quite have it all ready in time to show you for this video. So you'll have to tune in next week. It is so cute and I'm super excited this winter to be able to just go behind our house and collect driftwood, cut it up, and use that in our wood stove and A, save money on propane costs, B, be a little bit more eco-friendly, and C, dry out our air and not have this issue of like moisture just running down all of our doors and windows. So all around, I think it's gonna be a step in the right direction and we're, we're really excited about it. So yeah, I hope to see you guys next week when we post that video. Make sure that you are subscribed if you're not already so that you don't miss it. And we just really, as always, appreciate your time this week. Also, if you have a tiny home or a houseboat, sailboat, any anything like that that requires additional steps to kind of get ready for winter, we would love to know what kinds of things you do, what kinds of additional issues that you have that you have to prepare for and how you handle those. So let us know in the comments below. We'd be super interested to hear about your setup. Thanks, guys.